Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So, in emulation communities, it is a widely accepted fact that the CPU is the most important part for performance. Now, while this statement is factually true, in this video, I want to prove that the GPU is just as important a part, especially in more modern emulators like CMU, the Wii U emulator, RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator, and Citra, the emulator for the 3DS platform. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to pit my own GTX 980 Ti against my girlfriend's GTX 680 to see exactly what kind of performance differential we will see between using this more modern 980 Ti and the quite older GTX 680. I'm going to be testing three games on the three previously mentioned platforms. First of all, I'm going to be testing Breath of the Wild on CMU Emulator. So in this scenario, you can see the GTX 680 on the left and the GTX 980 Ti on the right. And as you can clearly see, even though we are using the exact same CPU, the exact same RAM and using the exact same storage, we are getting much, much better performance when using the newer 980 Ti over the older GTX 680. In order to try to remove the differential of VRAM between the 980 Ti and the 680, I am running the game at its stock resolution of 720p. Even though we are running at this resolution and neither GPU is hitting 100% usage, we are still getting a much better performance on the 980 Ti. Okay, so next up we are testing Persona 5 running on RPCS3, the PS3 emulator. As you can see in the frame rate indication window in the top left hand corner, I have already applied the 60fps patch to this game. I did this in order to see exactly what kind of performance numbers we can push on our 980 Ti over the GTX 680 since this game is at stock a 30fps game. As we can clearly see in this battle scene, we are ranging between 45 and 60fps. I chose Persona 5 for this test due to the fact that it is one of the most demanding games on RPCS3, this PlayStation 3 emulator. Now that we've finished this battle scene, let's transition on over to the GTX 680 and see what performance is like on that graphics card. So here on the 680, you can actually see that in this palace or dungeon, whatever you want to call it, we are actually not able to maintain a 30fps lock. I was quite surprised by this due to the fact that I am rendering both games on both GPUs at 1080p. In a similar circumstance, in this battle scene on the GTX 680, we are also not able to maintain a 30fps lock in this game. So as far as RPCS3 goes, you will definitely need a more modern GPU than a GTX 680 in order to maintain maximum performance. In my final benchmark test, I am going to be testing Citra, the 3DS emulator, using Pokemon Ultra Sun, one of the most demanding and up-to-date titles on this emulator. Okay, so here we are in-game in Pokemon Sun on Citra, the 3DS emulator. As you can see, by my framerate graph, our framerate is locked completely at 60fps. However, the game is not actually 60fps, it is just picking up the second touchscreen and the main display in my overlay, meaning that both screens are displaying at 30. As we run around in the outside area, you can see that we are locked completely to 30 or 60fps, whichever way you want to look at it. To be honest, Citra, this 3DS emulator, isn't the most demanding emulator, however, I am going to be unlocking my frame rates to see exactly what kind of performance both of these graphics cards can potentially get. I'm going to come to Emulation, Graphics, and I'm going to disable this speed percent. Clicking OK, you can see that on this 980 Ti, I am getting well over 200 FPS at all times, enabling me to speedrun around the island like you're seeing me doing in-game right now. Ok, the next thing I'm going to do is come back to my actual house and see what kind of performance I'm getting indoors in this less taxing area. When I come inside, you can see that we are running well over 300 FPS and when we come into our bedroom we are getting around 350 FPS. Ok, let's switch on over to the GTX 680. So in a similar fashion to the GTX 980 Ti, this 680 is able to maintain a 60 or 30 FPS lock in Pokemon Ultra Sun on Citra. As we come outside, you can also see that we are locked at 60fps, however our GPU is being used much much more. In this exact same scene and circumstance, the 980 Ti was only being utilised by about 30%, whereas this 680 is being used between 60 and 75% practically at all times. Let's proceed back to the top of this hill, and I'm once again going to unlock my framerate on this 680 to see our potential performance. 
Once again, I'm going to come to the Emulation tab, Configure, the Graphics tab, and I'm going to disable this speed limit. When I click OK, we can see that our GPU is now outputting about 100 frames, roughly about half of the amount that the 980 Ti was giving us. Due to this lower frame rate, we are not able to speedrun around the island as efficiently as we previously were. Let's just move on up the map and see if our performance gets any better. In this area, we are basically staying just about between 90 and 100 FPS. Not bad performance at all. Once again, I'm going to come back to my house, an indoor, less demanding area, and see what our performance is like in there. Okay, so when we come inside the house, we are rendering at about 150 frames per second, roughly about 200 frames lower than the 980 Ti was producing. So the conclusions we can draw from this video would be that depending on which emulator you are going to use, Citra, CMU or RPCS3, you are going to need varying amounts of GPU power. While it is still 100% true that the CPU is the most important component for an emulation PC, we can see by the performance numbers in this video that having a modern GPU can also massively help you in emulating your games. Regardless of this fact, if you are interested in trying out any of these emulators, you can find my full and complete set of guide for CMU, RPCS3 and Citra emulators down in the description of this video. Each one of these separate guides will help you get these emulators running and you will be up and emulating your games in no time at all. So once again guys, cheers for checking out the video, I hope you found this one in some way informative or interesting. If you want to see more videos like this one and help support the channel, you can head on over to the BSOD Gaming Patreon and consider pledging, all pledges and donations are greatly appreciated. Remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.